sports writers, Mike McGarry of the Press of Atlantic City, get some of his thoughts on the uh, the year in sports and some of the great stories he's been able to cover throughout the year. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Hey, Sully. How's it going? Great, man. Hope you had a, a nice Christmas, and, and thanks for taking a few minutes with us here this morning. I did, and, and same back to you, and no problem. Uh, we're we're kind of doing a year in review type of uh, theme today, and we just had on uh, for a pretty extensive interview uh, a girl you know, Jackie Adams, for a former Ocean City player. I know you recently did a story on her, on her and all the right, stuff at right. Stockton they've been doing for post concussion syndrome. What was your impression of her when you were doing that feature story? Well, my impression of her is just um, you know uh, just a tremendous sort of uh, courage. To really go out and and share her story with uh, with uh, people, you know, tell her story to me, and I was privileged enough to write it for, uh, you know, the, the press of Atlantic City. I know you've done stories on a story on her in the past, and I, I just think she has a tremendous amount of courage to go out and sort of detail the sort of struggles that she's been through as far as dealing with post concussion syndrome. And it, it was a story that, uh, when I wrote it, you know, I got, uh, more than a few emails back from people saying, Hey, you know, I've been through the same thing, or I know somebody who's kind of going through the same thing. And for her to go out there and, and again, I come back to that word courage to have the story, to tell her story, tell all she's been through. Uh, you know, I think it's really uh, going to help other people and, and let people know that, you know, that they're not alone in the world if they are sort of suffering through that post-concussion uh, syndrome. And, and, and the other thing, I think she really gave some insight. You know, we, we hear con- the word concussion and we hear concussion protocol and, you know, this NFL player is in the midst of a concussion protocol or this player's got a concussion. Uh, but, you know, we kind of discuss it in clinical terms. Uh, you know, I think by telling her story, she gave a real insight into people, into what a day-to-day life is like, uh, you know, when you're battling the effects of a concussion. How rare is that for you as a sports reporter to come across somebody of that age, you know, she's early 20s, I think 23 years old, uh, to be that open about attempts on taking her own life as a teenager? I mean, that's not something you hear very often from from somebody. Somebody who's gone through that, they want to keep that kind of private but she, like you said, she's had the courage to kind of come out and say, hey, yeah, you know, I did attempt to take my life, and, and this is what I learned from it, and this is why you should get help if you need it. Right. I mean, you, you, you're exactly right. It's not only rare in sports, it's rare in life that anybody would yeah. come out and sort of say that. And that's why, you know, I, I say she's got a lot of courage because the natural inclination is, you know, when you, it's something bad or you go through something highly personal like that, it, the natural inclination is to sort of keep it to yourself or... <laughs> You know, just tell a few people around you, but here she's come out and sort of spread the word. I think she's really, you know, doing a tremendous service to people and letting people know that, hey, you know, if you are going through this uh, head injury or coming back from a concussion, that, that you're not alone. And then, you know, that you can also sort of come out the other side of it when you're in the in, in the darkest, uh, you know, in, if you're in a dark place or a dark point now in, in your recovery, you know, you can you can come out the other side of it. You know, and and she's a person I think who has a tremendous future. I know she talked about being a teacher or or, or a coach after she graduates from Stockton. And I, I you know, in, in talking to her a couple of times for that story, and you know, her work with the Challenger program uh, down in Upper Township. You know, I, I think she'd just be a, a natural for that. So, you know, that, that's one of the great things about being a reporter is, is you get to meet people. Like uh, like a Jackie Adams, and uh, you know that that's one of the the, the benefits or uh, of the job, basically. Talk with Mike McGarry of the Press of Atlantic City. Uh, Mike, tell us some of your your favorite stories that you uh, either covered or or were a part of this year. I mean, so many stories throughout the year. Obviously, you're talking about twelve months worth of reporting. Uh, but what are some of the the stories and, and teams and players that stood out to you the most? Well, I think, you know, when, when, you know, the great thing about sports is kind of expect the unexpected. So, you know, it's the stories that you don't know that are going to happen. And, and, and you kind of go back to the run that the Holy Spirit baseball team made in the spring, you know, a below 500 team, you know, but they get hot at the right time and they end up winning a, a, a state baseball championship. Uh, so, so that's definitely one of the, one of the highlights of the year. You know, those things that come out of nowhere. And you see a team get hot, and 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 you start thinking, hey, you know, hey, this Holy Spirit, they won a first round game, they won a second game. Well, Holy Spirit's playing in the South Jersey Championship, you know, <laughs> and 
And the next thing you know, they win in that. And then, hey, Holy Spirit's playing in Tom's River for a state championship. So really, the sort of expect the unexpected is the thing that makes high school sports and all sports really neat. And I think the Holy Spirit baseball team kind of epitomized that this season. Also kind of a cool story, I thought, was the Atlantic Shore baseball team. You know, you see these runs from time to time in youth baseball, whether it be Little League or Babe Ruth. You know, obviously, you remember the, the 1998 Tom's River team that featured uh, Todd Frazier and and how that kind of can captivate an area for weeks at a time. Right, exactly. And, and uh, you know, th- that's one of the neat things, too, that the Atlantic Shore had in common with Holy Spirit is the, the crowd for the Holy Spirit games got a bit bigger with each win. So when it there's nothing better than a basketball team or a baseball team kind of getting on a postseason run as far as, you know, sort of capturing, um, you know, capturing the community. You saw that a little bit with uh, St. Augustine Preps basketball team last year. They went to a South Jersey final. Really, Saeed Nelson kind of emerging as one of the state's top players. You know, it was back last March. He scored his thousand point last weekend. So, you know, when a school or a, or a youth team goes on a run like that, it, it's really neat the way it sort of catches fire in the community. What, one of the stories I thought it is kind of becoming a big story, and uh, a lot of the old-timey guys will probably kind of frown upon this, but when you're talking about 17- and 18-year-old kids nowadays, you know, you see a kid like Amir Mitchell from Cedar Creek and, and how he's getting recruited by so many schools, and, and now Bo Melton's going to kind of have to go through that the next year or so. But seeing the, these really high-level high school football recruits and, and the way they handle the recruiting process and the way they make the announcements with these hype videos, uh, the videos are awesome. I don't know, you know, obviously you saw the, the Amir Mitchell one, but some of the other ones from around the nation, and they're so well done. You know, Bleach Report does them and some of these other services. And uh, it's kind of the new wave of recruiting, right? Well, a uh, new wave of recruiting and, and uh, almost a new wave of coverage. I mean, and that's something that's really changed you know, the the Internet has obviously changed everything. But back, you know, in the early 90s, uh, recruiting was not covered the way it is now. I mean, you knew a kid was a Division One sort of prospect, and, you know, you, know, you wrote about it a little bit. But now with uh, social media and, and websites like Rivals and, and Bleacher Report, it's almost a cottage industry. And I, I sometimes think that fans of college football teams – are more excited for who they are recruiting than the actual games. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. they, they're, there's almost more attention given to, you know, the, that first Wednesday in February, that signing day, than there is, you know, what happens on a Saturday uh, on uh, on the football field or the basketball court. But you're right. Uh, you know, Amir Mitchell kind of went through it uh, last year, and and uh, you know now he's at Michigan, and, and Bo Melton, who of course leads Cedar Creek to the South Jersey Group Two title. And it's already starting to, uh, the scholarship offers are already starting to pile up for him. He'll be the sort of uh, next guy to go through it, as will uh, the wide receiver. Marquise Bell of, of Bridgeton will be one of the uh, most highly recruited football players that we've had the past couple of years. Numerous schools, including Michigan, have offered uh, Marquise Bell scholarships. So, you know, those are two stories that you kind of see emerging in, uh, in 2016. I'm glad you mentioned the, the fan reaction from the college football teams. That was something that struck me as so odd and new. You know, when you see Amir Mitchell getting mentioned on Twitter by guys like number one Michigan fan or True Blue or all these guys, you know, hey, welcome to the family. And it's like, wow, these fans are so into their recruits and, and who's coming on board the next year. It, it's kind of it's interesting to see how, like you said, the, the fans of these college football teams are so invested in the recruiting process. Yeah, I mean, and you see on Twitter the fans trying to convince uh, some of these kids to make <laughs> right, a decision yeah. to go to their school and stuff like that. So it is, it's it's a personal interaction through social media. It, it's the Internet, it's, it's rivals and, and, and Bleacher Report. And, and uh, you know, I know from us, whenever we do a story about a, a kid committing to a, a college or a, a kid saying he's narrowed down to five schools or a kid going to a visit, it gets... Tremendous in, uh, interest that uh, you know on our website at pressofac.com. So, you know, obviously a lot of people are uh, a lot of people live and die with their college football team, and, and part of that is you need players to win. And, uh, and before you can win on Saturday, you got to win the recruiting wars, and and, and that's it. you know people are tremendously interested in it. That's got to be so tough on a high school coach. You know, you're trying to tell a kid, hey, get in the weight room or, or go do this, go do that, and the kid's like. 
dude, I'll be out of here in three months. I'm, I'm going to Michigan, <laughs> whatever it might be, Ohio well, State or whatever. A balancing act, and that's what co- it's probably tougher to coach today than it was, you know, uh, in the early 90s or 80s. That, that's the balancing act, and, and uh, you know, that's the balancing act for the athlete, too, to stay focused on what is currently happening in senior season and not get caught up in all the hype of of, of the recruiting. And, and, and most of the athletes are able to do it. I mean, they're special uh, people because they have sort of talent. They're used to handling uh, attention and, and things like that. So it's, it's just kind of the way of, uh, you know, it's just the way of doing business in 2015. Talking with Mike McGarry of the Press of Atlantic City, kind of going through some of the stories of the year. Uh, Mike, Cole and myself were talking about this uh, before the last break, uh, about Joe Callahan, a guy you've covered during his high school career at Holy Spirit, and and how he became the the number one player in Division three college football. Talk about him a little bit, and and what you remember from him from high school. And did you expect this kind of performance in, in his college career? Uh no. <laughs> you know, I mean, but credit to Joe. Credit to Joe Callahan. When when Joe was at Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit was of course a, a power, and Joe is one of many good players on the team, uh, and he did have some big games. Uh, but maybe he got so overshadowed by some of the other players on on a team, and and for him to sort of win the Heisman Trophy of Division Three football is really just just remarkable. And and, and it goes to show, and, and, and sort of another thing is that you know uh, these these athletes keep keep improving. You know they they keep working hard, they keep improving, and and, and you never know when somebody's gonna someone's gonna peak or, or get better and and Joe is a, a prime example of it so while he had a great high school career uh you know I, I'd, I'd be lying if I said uh, you know I thought he was going to go forward and be you know uh the division three player of the year basically you know I mean he was an all-star quarterback good arm a lot you know made a lot of big plays uh, but I don't think anybody saw this ha- happening. But he he picks the right school, goes to the right school, continues to improve, and, and now he's just had a wonderful, wonderful college football career. Uh, Mike, before we let you go, wanted to, to mention one other guy that that some people might be familiar with, uh, Mike Trout. <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, you know one of the top two or three, if not number one, in Major League Baseball. And and I remember him from high school. And and to think that he would be this at such a young age is still kind of mind-boggling, even though he's been in the pros for about four years. You know, you're talking about a a kid who's in the conversation for MVP pretty much every year and and putting up tremendous numbers. I mean, such such a great thing for South Jersey to kind of say, hey, this is one of our own. And and to to be able to watch his career unfold is just outstanding. Yeah, I mean, I have to write something where the the press uh, of the legs, he's having a sort of year-end thing uh, on the front page of the runs later this week, and I had to write a few paragraphs about Mike Trout here, and and the the kind of phrase I use is he makes it, maybe continue to make the spectacular scene routine, you know, every night. Uh, You know, second in the uh, AL Most Valuable Player Award, and people just kind of gave it a ho-hum this year. Oh, he was second in the the Most Valuable (laughs) Player Award. Uh, I mean, he does a great job. And this, and this, you know, past summer I was out in California, and I got a chance to go to to an Angels game. Uh, Mike had hosted the, the Millville boy who underwent eye surgery, and, right. and I got to see him sort of interact with that boy and, and, and do a great job there. And I got to see sort of, you know, I had seen Mike Trump play in Baltimore. I'd seen him play in, in Washington, but I'd never seen, you know, just how big Mike Trout out, is out in California uh, for the Angels with his own section and his own sort of giant <laughs> bobblehead statue and his face and picture all over the place. So, really, I mean, he is coming into this season as, you know, the face of baseball, basically. And in his first four four years, I mean, he's got numbers that put him right there with guys like Willie Mays and, and, and Mickey Mantle. So, you know, you're kind of watching a, a Hall of Fame career play out. And, uh you know, and I think the challenge is for us not to become ho hum about it. Say Mike Trout hit a home run last night, or Mike Trout jumped over the fence and made a great catch. The, <laughs> the, the challenge for us is to really enjoy it and realize just how special it is every night of the baseball season. I think what makes him so appealing is people have been waiting so long for a guy like this, kind of a throwback to the fifties. You know, that that hometown kid, that all shucks thing, that you know still gets nervous for interviews, even though he's four years into the league. You know, somebody that that old time baseball fans and baseball purists can really latch on to and say, "Hey, this is our guy." You know? Yeah, well, he is kind of a, a throwback player. You know, the kind of 
you know, you don't. He does show emotion on the baseball field, but you don't see him doing bat flips and stuff like that. He hits a home run, he puts his head down and runs around the bases. I mean, you do get emotion out of him and things like that. But I think that's right. I, I think, you know, I, I mean, so far, uh, and and I have no doubt that it will continue, so far he's done everything right in his baseball career and sort of public life. And, you know, that's a testament to, you know, where he grew up and his parents and, and, and how he was raised and how he was coached growing up. Good stuff, Mike. I appreciate you taking a few minutes this morning, and uh, happy holidays to you. Enjoy the uh, the rest of the week and New Year's and all that stuff, and we'll be looking forward to the uh, year-in-review stuff from the Press of Atlantic City. Thanks, Mike. All right. No problem. Sully, anytime. Thanks.